Hello, this is Lenga64 and uh, I was going to do a video about uh, two Mega Drive to GamePort uh, controller converters that I've uh, made but I've decided to save that for later uh, because uh, I need to wait for something to arrive in the mail before I feel like I could uh, present uh, those converters properly. Uh, so in the meantime I'm just gonna show myself doing some electronic uh, tomfooleries uh, and a very sort of loose uh, unscripted format uh, which is something that I haven't really done in years uh, since the H2000 videos that I used to make uh, where I basically do a upgrade on a cut down version of a particular 486 motherboard giving it uh, support for 3 volt uh, processors and uh, repairing my compact desk noob 386 uh, the most sensible way in that I actually take the guts of a modern power supply and stuffing it to the chassis of the original power supply as opposed to repairing the original power supply as originally planned even though that's uh, quite nonsensical to do these days so, uh, and I'm actually going to do that uh, power supply mod properly with like crimp connectors and brass standoffs and all uh, which I feel is very important for a power supply because if it's done cheaply it might end uh, in disaster if something decides to go wrong um, also, I was originally going to do two versions of this video. One where it's in this standard uh, lame guy format with, with me present in it, face and all. And another version that's sort of like a highly generic, uh, uh, highly generic non-descriptive uh, version that's narrated by a text-to-speech engine because uh, under the belief that uh, that would uh, attract more views than uh, than this normal format that I do uh, because people nowadays seem to uh, dislike videos with people actually in it these days so or being run by actual people uh, but uh, given I have a great difficulty trying to make more than one video a year these days I've decided to uh, scrap that idea plus uh, it would upset some people for whatever strange reason if I actually do commit to that uh, idea uh, so yeah, I don't know that what the deal is with them when everyone's doing it and uh, people seem to like it more than uh, than uh, format videos uh, of this style. Uh, but anyway, uh, enough uh, nonsensical, possibly self-destructive rambling. Uh, I better get on with this before I start coughing uncontrollably again. So here it is, this is my ASUS VL-I486SV2GX4 motherboard uh, presented in the superior PAL format even though this is a digital video uh, because stupid import cameras is fuck but anyway, um, if the name wasn't obvious enough this is a 486 motherboard with VLB slots uh, two of them and uh, if the pre-video rambling segment wasn't obvious enough uh, what I'm going to do with this board is to upgrade this into the X4 version because even, uh, this board uh, came with a sticker that would hide the X4 suffix and uh, if it isn't apparent enough um, there are some missing components on this motherboard particularly around this area here and that's because this is a cut down OEM version that's limited to running 5 volt chips only and uh, this area here is basically the voltage regulation module for the motherboard so no 3 volt chips uh, uh, for this board in its current state so what I'll be doing uh, is I will populate the missing components and bring this up into the X4 version uh, so I can run like a DX4 on it and supposedly a Cyrix, CX, I don't know, Cyrix uh, 5x86 on this because this uh, particular revision of this motherboard uh, supposedly supports it. Uh, the revision 1.0 board uh, apparently needs a BIOS upgrade but uh, revision 2.0 boards have the newer BIOS version that might be able to run uh, the 5x86 which is uh, what I want to try once I'm done with this modification. Uh, fortunately on this motherboard it actually lists uh, what components are to be populated to upgrade this into an X4 version so I don't have to rely on some uh, dodgy document on the internet that doesn't have any attribution attached to it because internet. Um, 
So basically, I need to put a 7407 here in soy, uh, in soy uh, package, uh, which is a downside to this revision because the older revisions use a much easier to work with dip uh, version of the 7407, but this one uses a soy. So this is what uh, this is the first thing that I'm gonna attack because that's the trickiest to install. And then I need to put an LT1085 here and a MOSFET here, which the silk screen says to put an LDB605. But uh, you can't really find that MOSFET anymore. That's a mo national semiconductor part. But there's a, there are substitutes that, uh, but I have a substitute that should uh, hopefully work. I also need to put the uh, uh, electrolytic capacitor here. I also need to put some jumpers here and then some tantrums here. And then some tantrums here as well. So, so here's the place uh, for the 7407 IC. And uh, the first thing I will do before I try to surface mount solder with lead paste is to clean off the area just to make sure. And then I also have to remove the lead that's uh, been left on the footprint. Sadly, I don't have my uh, chisel tip uh, for this, which would have worked better, but um, shouldn't matter too much. Probably not doing it right. I think that's already good enough. So that's enough for the iron. Next step, I need to preheat the area. Supposedly, it will help make uh, applying the lead paste easier. I think that should be enough for application. Because I'm too cheap to get a proper applicator. Ah, this works better once I trim the ne needle. This will do. It's continuously oozing. Leave a blob there. Another blob there. trouble with is that the lead paste got stuck in the needle shaft but trimming it fixed that doesn't matter if the blobs of lead are quite close because this lead paste once it melts it will clump into place into the pad essentially so, next step, the place the chip. I I accumulate dairy. I need it, Pang, for now. Okay. Okay. So it doesn't matter if the. Blob of lead paste is bridging because it'll fix itself once it melts. I know this because I've tested it SMD soldering prior. I'm gonna go hook up my dad's old reflow station and then my bits of metal. 
to protect the plastic parts nearby. Just in case. Okay, there we go. Begins to melt. Oh great, there's one leg that's uh, bridging, but I should be able to fix that with the soldering iron. Alright, so all that's left to be dealt with now are just through hole crap. Okay, let me clear some bias first. Okay, it's melted. I'll be doing a crap job because I'm not um, don't have a degree in this kind of field. But yeah, as long as it works, it's good enough. Great. Slight PCB damage. Oh well. As long as it's not shorting out things. At least the vias are designed such that the ground planes don't end up sucking out all the heat. Like there's a gap. Uh, it's one of those sticky jumpers. I hate that. As I always do, yes. I can do it. Fall off. I need one of those jumpers later. for the components I need to populate are already cleared so we'll get the components 
Alright, so this is the substitute that I'll be using. It's an IRLZ 44N general purpose uh, MOSFET. To measure where to bend. Just around here. Bend the legs over. Okay. And I'll try to solder it on the other side. I think the motherboard's using this as a switch for the five volt supply for like the low power chips. I have like power saving functions. I think this is for that. Because this MOSFET, all it does seems to just cut the 5 volt supply from the CPU. Okay, I could test the board with just this to test if the MOSFET would work. So I'll just leave it not yet soldered to the motherboard yet. No, the, the tab to the board yet. Okay, I already have the motherboard wired up to a power supply. Test if the MOSFET is going to provide a 5 volt uh, supply to the CPU with this. What's weird about this motherboard is that unlike other 486 motherboards where they just have one common rail that's either fed with 5 volts or 3.45 volts from a volt reg module, this one, the output of the LT1085 goes here. It doesn't really connect to a common bus it seems. There are no jumpers uh, to suggest uh, that are used to select the voltages. Um, also, uh, there's no need to populate these uh, surface mount components. Okay, and I've and I've taken a look at an actual uh, actual uh, fault. Uh, no. I've taken a look at a photo of this motherboard with the volt reg section uh, populated and. Uh, it doesn't have these components populated either, which makes me wonder. So, alright, enough babbling. It's on DC voltage. Uh, okay, power on. Board will not work because there's no CPU, but it should still provide 5 volts. Use this as a ground. Okay, we still have, we have 4.6, 4.2. 6 volts Ah, we got 5 volts, okay Oh yeah, this is the source Forgot It's for something else, I'm not sure exactly But it seems to work uh, See, so yeah, the volt rig seems to work I don't know, that's not a volt rig, this is a MOSFET Yeah, it works, and also when uh, populating this chip, you really have to get the 7407 because that has a high voltage uh, output capability and the voltage going to the FET is higher than TTL so you're, uh, se an actual seven, a plain 7407 is really required it cannot be substituted with a with a 74LS07 uh, or 74HC07 because those are TTL Oh great, there's going to be crappy music in this segment. <sighs> but uh, next step is to add the uh, voltage regulators. Oh, just a voltage regulator into the board. I went with LD1085s, which are ST microelectronic ones. And uh, 
I looked at the data sheet of these and the specs seem very very close to the LT1085. The reason I went with these is because these are a lot cheaper and they're functionally identical anyway. I think it's like uh, LT does stand for like linear technology so Okay. Oh, I have a bet that this will trip the content ID system. Even though it's a shit cover. The nerds play. To place a bridge there. So, and then a pin header. Place a jumper. Should remember to put a jumper cap on this. Uh -huh. Ow! Hot, 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 hot. Okay, I'm gonna do the tantrolums because they're really really small and fiddly. These ones I had to pilfer from that dead giga shite board because none of the stores here sell 10 microfarad tantrolums. So, but even brand new tantrolums are prone to becoming dead shorts and explode like firecrackers, so. Should hold it.
Okay. So now all tantrumified. Yep. Eh, it's too quiet. But then, well, uh, last time I got content ID because of you playing music in the background was because of that. I think it's the TRV820. It had a really, really sensitive microphone. Uh, not sure about this one though. Yeah, the fears. Okay, so after a lot of finagling about and uh, almost throwing a massive hissy fit when I thought I killed the motherboard until it decided to work again, uh, the upgrade does actually work. And I now have the DX4 capability on this motherboard. However, while the 1085 does work as intended, it's actually outputting 3.45 volts, which is what this chip wants. Um, the MOSFET that I went with, uh, not so much. Because I, I just learned that the way how this circuit works is that if a 5 volt chip is installed, the 7407 will drive the gate pin of the MOSFET low, uh, high. So that the 5 volt from the supply rail around here is bridged to the CPU rail. So giving the CPU 5 volts. And when a 3 volt chip is installed, it disengages the FET. So only 3 volts goes through. Unfortunately, this MOSFET doesn't really work uh, properly for this circuit. Because only like 3.6 to 4 volts actually goes through instead of 5 volts. So... It's not quite close to uh, NDB605, um, but I could. So I, in the mean, so in the meantime, I'll just remove this FET and then place a jumper, so that the, uh, that way the voltage selection will be manual. But this board actually has automatic voltage selection, which is interesting, because uh, you don't really hear that very often with 486 boards. Okay, so here's the somewhat oversized uh, power supply unit for my compact Desk Noob 38620E. I'm not sure if the 386S also uses this kind of power supply, even though both machines have a similar form factor. And I, but I know for sure the original Desk Noob 386 doesn't, because that one resembles the uh, original 5170. Uh, and it looks like it's using a big, much bigger power supply unit. And uh, as one may have noticed, this uh, power supply unit is an empty husk at the moment. And that's because the original power supply is broken and uh, it has a boot loop problem uh, and obviously finding a replacement uh, power supply is next to impossible as with uh, all compacts uh, from this era basically uh, for some reason. Uh, yet uh, the PS2 has seemed more abundant than compact machines instead. So yeah, uh, originally I was going to take the rather retarded route of trying to repair the original power supply. But uh, uh, try as I might, I've been unable to figure out what the problem is. It has a, if I haven't mentioned it already, it has a boot loop problem where it just runs for like half a second, then it turns off. And it repeats the cycle over and over and over again. And uh, the fact that it still produces like uh, the proper voltages and stuff, like it's actually doing switch mode power supply things for the little time it runs. Um, I speculate that the primary side is fine, but the problem might be somewhere in the secondary side. Probably probably this custom compact I, I see that uh, it's not visible, but it's that one uh, might be the problem. But I don't know, it could be one of the tantrums, but either way it's been so much of a hassle trying to repair this thing. I've uh, basically decided to give up and uh, take the more sensical approach of taking one of these cheap as chinks uh, SFX power supplies, take its guts and stuffing it to the chassis of the original power supply. Uh, hopefully this thing, being, despite being cheap as chinks, should be more than good enough to run a 386. And this unit in particular is still uh, uh, single rails, it doesn't have that split rails bullshit going on. So that's exactly what I'm going to do in this uh, part of the video. I'm going to take the guts of this thing into this uh, chassis. But I'm going to do it properly. Like uh, I would actually like uh, 
crimp on uh, connector contacts and actually reuse the connect original connector housing from the original power supply so it will just be a straight uh, plug-in uh, deal uh, with little uh, wire splices as possible so and I'm also gonna do it uh, such that uh, this uh, modification will be completely reversible so that if if I do manage to repair the original power supply I can stick that back in but in the meantime I'm just gonna stick an SFX power, power supply into this um, I decided to went, go for one of these. Originally I was going to try to get one of those Meanwell power supply units but uh, finding one that uh, produces the amount of wattage that this uh, Chin that uh, these uh, uh, Chinese Chinesium SFX PSUs can generate uh, is quite difficult and expensive uh, whereas these ones are dirt cheap uh, by comparison uh, which figures uh, because um, um, economy of scales or just HDX power supplies are more popular. Uh, this one in particular is still a single rail unit. Uh, all the voltage rails are just single individual rails rather than split rails that modern power supplies have. Perhaps one advantage that cheap PSUs have is, is because of that uh, corner cutting. So yeah, uh, so I basically uh, so I guess I gotta get uh, going with this uh, before uh, I lose daylight. Okay, obviously the first thing I gotta do is to take this uh, power supply to bits. Uh, and it's just a cheap, uh, uh, whatever, China brand uh, power supply unit uh, that I've uh, been able to go get hold of very cheaply. And it should hopefully be more than good enough to power a 386. And it's cheaper than getting a Meanwell unit uh, of equivalent power. The ratings on the label may be bullshit, uh, uh, given these things are, but uh, should be more than more than enough to run a 386. Really, the original Desnub PSU uh, that I showed uh, is uh, rated for like 150 watts, according to the parts parts brochure. So, uh, hopefully, this. Uh, I know, uh, sticking an ATX power supply on this desk noob uh, is pretty much uh, straightforward because uh, it doesn't need, if I haven't mentioned it in the last clip, uh, the desk noob doesn't need uh, negative 5 volts from the power supply. It actually generates its own with a 7805, uh, no, 7905 uh, present on the motherboard. And uh, most AT power supplies also use a 7905 uh, internally to get negative 5 volts. So I've uh, thought about uh, possibly cobbling together a ATX to AT adapter board uh, that has the 7905 uh, uh, present on it so you don't have to use that uh, stupid voltage blaster thingy. I'm surprised uh, no wanker engineer has uh, done that yet. I think that's a more convenient option, but then there's also the problem of uh, making uh, multi-rail power supply units to work uh, properly with only just one rail being used by the system. Yeah, it's all... Uh, come to think of it, I think I should have tested the power supply before I committed to this. Oh well. Yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install the power supply oriented like this on this part of the chassis is this, that has the mo most clearing with uh, the least obstructions from uh, standoffs I would put it here yeah obviously I would put standoffs I won't just bolt it straight onto the aluminum that would be immediate death so I would just uh, bolt the unit down here with stand, bolt the power supply here around here on standoffs. Alternatively, I could use one one of the standoffs here, save me one hole. Just leave it laid out like that, and then additionally, I'll just stick it like like this. Uh, the standoff here is a bit too close to the edge, and I might not be able to run my tapping tool through. And then once I've mounted this uh, power supply unit, next step is I will put two, uh, I think 60 millimeter fans 
around here so that there would at least be airflow going around the power supply which is better than having no airflow and as one may have noticed there seem, doesn't seem to be any place where a fan would have been plate installed on this power supply unit and that's because it relies on on passive convection and I have a funny feeling that's uh, probably what the original power supply uh, ply failed also looking around um, there, there are actually some commonalities uh, with the original Desnu PSU and this modern ATX one. Um, I got two. I don't know. There's just uh, I don't know, the rectifier is here. Not sure what that FET is, but usually there should be two FETs. Oh no, there's two. There's a second one. Switching FETs to drive the induct main inductor. And then uh, what looks to be. I know these are rectifier. These are re all rectifiers. Maybe for the three voltage rails, uh, five volt, twelve volt. I know three point three and five volt and twelve volt. And uh, there's also negative twelve. So this is a well, well trend controller. There, I've seen that chip, that brand of chip on uh, some monitors. So. One can tell that this is a single rail power supply because all the wires for each voltage rail all gather around in one common cluster. So here we have the 12 volt rail, the ground plane, 5 volt rail and 3.3 volt rail. I originally planned to get like a 1 ohm resistor to bridge the 3.3 volt rail to ground to load it. I think a power supply this modern doesn't really care if the 3.3 volt rail is uh, unloaded. And I think there's a loading resistor on the circuit anyway. Uh, so, so yeah, I'm gonna head outside and mark places where to put the standoffs on. I have to realign. Oh, great. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, we have marks. Next is to place it under the drill press and uh, drill away.
down here. Yeah. Oh, right, it's too low. Sadly, this one has only has one eighth uh, groove pitch, I think, as opposed to one fourth, which my standoffs need. But so what I'm gonna do is I will stick a screw in here that's uh, of one fourth pitch to turn it into a one fourth inch uh, screw tap. And since this is aluminum, it's soft enough to do that. this this kind of cheap tap uh, seems to wear out quite easily because even with aluminum the threading seems to go away Well, it's a cheap top, and I think it's really meant for soft metals. I understand. I don't understand the, the kind of memes that the Pinayland bloggers use, where it's like 10 years old, if not longer, but like 10 years behind of current trends. As if the inter as if the as if the Filipinos just haven't heard uh, this use of the internet. Uh, or something Not for my cheap way of uh, expanding the thread threading yeah basically our memes are outdated by 10 years and it's stupid I cannot I cannot go by a day without hearing at least without hearing that Metal Gear Solid uh, alert sound at least once Probably annoying some metal work, uh, um, metal workers or metal smiths. I don't know, blacksmith. For mm. using a screw to expand the threading instead of getting like a a one fourth pitch uh, M3 tap, I think is difficult to find because uh, most places don't specify. With that, I should not be able to install the standoffs. Yep. I forgot to do the same thing on this one hole. Thought I finished it all. Finish it. I'm also going to retain the plastic uh, underlay to protect the 
to make sure that the power supply board does not make contact whatsoever with the chassis because it would end horribly see if it will align anything is good enough except for one quadrant oh well so here's the power supply board uh, mounted to the chassis and uh, well uh, it turned out really really good and it's sturdy and also most importantly the ground uh, plane on the board should make contact with the chassis uh, which I've tested with a multimeter uh, continuity from I'd say the heat sink into the chassis it should it should uh, make a continue ground should make continuity with the chassis as it should that's why in the past mod, uh, system builders tend to put this like insulating washer onto the like motherboard screws and that's stupid because the motherboard often depends on the chassis ground uh, to work well hmm but that uh, it's a rare thing but uh uh, for a problem to arise because the motherboard is not grounded to the chassis properly, but it does but it does happen on some boards so next thing I'll do uh, is I'll put some wire some wires with fast on 250 connectors uh, uh, Terminated on it for the live and neutral connections, and then I will remove a bunch of wires that I don't need I just need uh, five five volt wires or maybe a six for the power light uh, for two 12 volt lines the negative 12 volt line and then and also power good and then connect uh, the PS online straight to ground so it'll behave like an AT power supply more or less it's interesting to see how power supplies have shrunk quite a bit that desk new P the original desk new PSU board was huge it took up this entire space and look at the ATX power supply and you uh, even ATX, uh, ATX power supplies are much smaller than that then the components are all much more tightly spaced in this one and it is on the desk noob so original PSU so yeah I'll get on with uh, uh, removing a bunch of wires and then adding in the live and neutral lines to connect to the power switch just have to remember I have to wire it correctly otherwise if I would short mains I would blow up this, view, this switch this switch looks very distinct for these machines okay first off I'll crimp uh, connect some fast on to 50 terminals for the live and neutral lines that will connect to the switch so should do it Okay, come tap and this. Well, there's some inconsistency, but the conductivity should be fine still. It's quite secure. I'll put the nylon and the silicon sheets that for some reason are quite expensive. These are sort of like cut down fast on 250 connectors because they don't have like that extended bit that would have uh, gripped onto the insulation 
Okay. So I've done quite a number of things off camera, which uh, to be fair is a bit boring. I was just uh, disconnecting a bunch of unnecessary wires and then also cobbling together a little LED board for driving the LEDs on the power supply. Uh, also soldering the live and neutral wires to the power switch. Uh, annoyingly, I just found out that uh, the power, the desk noob's uh, power cable uh, which I was originally planning to transfer carry over to this one turns out the part that connects to the uh, C13 connector goes to the circuit board directly around this area and then the actual cable that goes to the power switch then runs from there and uh, yeah uh, another problem is I while I, I have enough cable to make my own that goes straight to the C13 connector Annoyingly, I've ran out of SL15, uh, no, not SL156, fast on 250 uh, con connectors. So, yeah, no desk noob tonight. So, in the meantime, I'll just uh, start uh, wiring up the con uh, connector to the uh, connector housing to the power supply. I've actually taken the time to get the original connector housing off. Um, these are actually still being made, uh, but uh, I forgot what mod, what's the part number for these. I'll just uh, stick it into the video during editing. Uh, the, these connector housings use SL156 contacts, which can still be had today. They're made by TE Connectivity, which was formerly AMP. I uh, basically need one of these uh, little contacts here. If, uh, okay, camera focus, uh, which the original PSU uses uh, so yeah uh, these contacts can still be had uh, and yeah I'll just uh, start painstakingly wiring this uh, wiring the cables up to this uh, connector housing so uh, supposedly there are actually like contact uh, extractors for connector housings but I bet they're like really really expensive may as well just get a small flat tip screwdriver and keep jamming them into these slots to release the uh, locking tab <laughs> so yeah <laughs> let me get on with that this to be a decent contact Close. that turned out nicely well, turns out I'm supposed to be using the 0.5 millimeter vase size rather than the 1 millimeter vase because it resulted in pretty fat crimps that would not fit in the housing properly. Turns out, unless I correct it with a pair of pliers. As well, since this is just doing for low voltage, since this is just 5 volt stuff, uh, I don't think it's too important. So, go start crimping the ground wire or at least just crimp one of the ground wires because it's really really tedious to crimp these right I don't know if this size is base is a good seven five six it's really hard and it's stuck it does, ah, this is the correct one. 8.5. So I just. Snap so I didn't like that. And then rinse and repeat. Okay, I'm done crimping about, and that's the finished connector with all the wires uh, connected to the respective pins. I've reused the orange wire for the hard drive activity LED, so uh, don't go assuming this would go bang because I miswired or something. So yeah, it's looking quite nice so far. Uh, I just have to get uh, more fast on 250 contacts uh, connectors to get the C13 power connector wired up to the power switch. Ideally, one would want the fuse to be around in between this connection 
in case a short circuit takes place in the fuse on the on, a, on the switch as opposed to the short circuit taking place on the power supply and that's exactly how the, how it was designed in the desk new PSU and most AT power supplies as well but sadly I can't really do that so but, uh, I might be able to get away with it as long as I flick the power switch with dry hands and not wet hands yeah it was actually a danger with these old machines where because the power switch actually has mains running through it you can get electrocuted if your hands are wet and on Korean computers uh, they tend to employ a safety stick of sorts where it's basically just a bit of plastic that extends to the power supply or the power switch I think IBM also did that on their later systems but uh, uh, Hyundai and Samsung computers uh, from Korea uh, had that a lot even Samsung monitors also had that uh, on uh, their late 90s early 2000s monitors so yeah I'll have to buy the needed materials tomorrow and uh, continue uh, work on this uh, from uh, then on okay a day has passed and I've finally got the materials I need so uh, apparently the, these uh, push on contacts are also known as D52s because these ones I bought actually have the extended uh, bit uh, at the end of it uh, that actually uh, grabs hold of the insulation but I think they're still called 250 or fast on 250 contact uh, push on connectors uh, so I already have it can have the switch connected to the C13 power connector I've also replaced the capacitor here for the 5 volts uh, has become bloated the one for the 3 volt uh, rail has also bloated but uh, since I'm not using 3.3 volts uh, I don't think it really matters uh, I've uh, I think I already mentioned the uh, I think I've already mentioned the LED board here for driving the LEDs on the power supply with the orange cable repurposed uh, for the hard drive activity light which uh, pulls down when it's active so it's uh, connecting to the anode of the LED uh, wire and then putting a uh, 75 ohm resistor there just in case as per the way how it wa was wired on the original power supply so yeah I think it's pretty much set I just have to do a test run I think I'll try running the power supply passively because I think the it's possible that the the desk noob doesn't really draw too much power that will make this PSU run really really hot but I'll test if it gets too hot I'll put the fan or two uh, to get some air circulating around it uh, so because I can't I don't really want to like cut holes around the bottom to draw cool air in from the outside because I want it, I want this modification to be reverse reversible so but uh, having some air air circulation is better than having no circulation I would argue I've also added the screws uh, that would have been used by the original PSU board I just put them in there uh, in here so that they don't get lost and I've also put some uh, zip ties to tidy up the cables with so yeah I think I'll just do a dry run uh, with only a cooling fan attached as a load and see if it'll work without exploding uh, hopefully so we checking okay should be fine alright here it goes huh why did it only run briefly weird crap hmm have to go and double check uh, why is it not working I think it's underloaded so I have no other choice but to plug it to the desk noob I guess okay last chance I have the power supply hooked up straight to the desk noob now so well here goes nothing they probably just power on for like a split second and it doesn't turn on anymore if this if this is just a case of uh, power supply dying because it was new old stock of course it doesn't it doesn't work it doesn't it does not work so the BSU module just 
went bad after the one time it was used. Shit. Well, I can't be bothered with uh, replacing the PSU board and rewiring everything all over again. So I've uh, recapped the unit in hopes of trying to save it. So here it goes. Piece of shit! Still refuses to bloody work! Switch mode power supplies are retarded. If I'm gonna design a computer, they will use linear transformers. Because those do not break. Piece of shit! Well, this is peak lame guy retardation. Because I actually went and got another identical uh, PSU that's actually beat up, that all is also working. And then I gutted it and stuffed it here as well, and it did pretty much the same thing as the one I'm using right now, which is now working. Turns out, ATX PSUs have a rather sneaky way of doing things, and that they have a sense line for the 3.3 volt rail uh, to detect if there's a voltage dropout. Because on the ATX power supply, look at that one of the 3.3 volt rails here, uh, wires here, there's actually an extra wire connected to the same pin and then another extra wire connected to one of the ground wires and there are these pins here labeled 3.3 VS plus and minus which is what those wires uh, connect to and the power supply and uh, those pin those inputs are for sensing the 3.3 volt rail if it if it uh, drops below a threshold it would shut off when the power, when uh, it goes below threshold. And what I did with this modification process is I, discon I inadvertently disconnected the sense lines and basically the power supply shuts off because it could not sense the 3.3 volt rail and it thinks the 3.3 uh, volt rail is dead. So as you can see See, now it's bloody working, and I've spent all that effort recapping the bloody thing and doing, and even gutting another PSU, only to find out there's just those two wires that I simply connect to 3.3 volts and ground. So, thanks by the way, Edwin. Okay, so I bolted on some, what I think are 60 millimeter fans, uh, that I had to get from something else, uh, a hard drive cooler. Uh, because finding fans of this size nowadays is quite difficult unlike before when I was a kid when fans of all sizes were like readily available and nowadays most of the shops here just sell fans uh, that have been pilfered from uh, scrapped uh, server systems because China suppliers uh, but uh, in any way I've uh, bolted two fans uh, to this part of the heatsink the fact that there are I don't know not heatsink the cover the fact that the grills there are a bit different makes me wonder if there was a version of this uh, power supply that did have a fan attached. But I don't know, there's very little information for compact machines of this era. And I've also tested the voltage rails uh, to make sure that uh, they haven't uh, uh, dropped in half because of the recap job I've done. Uh, actually a good thing I've done that recap job anyway so that this power supply will run even longer. As Chinesium caps tend to go bad, the results might be might potentially be disastrous. So I've uh, wired it up to the fan header to drive these two fans together. Uh, these don't uh, bring cool air from the outside in and I don't like to, to cut more holes onto, uh, onto the chassis to, uh, for that. Instead I j these fans are just solely to help uh, circulate air around the power supply. Uh, which would be better than leaving it uh, being cooled passively. Especially as the primary side here gets uh, quite warm and I've actually encountered an SFX PSU uh, in a running system that had been running with its fan uh, not run, not spinning, uh, not turning because it uh, ran out of oil and it got really really hot. So yeah, having some, uh, it probably won't get as hot as uh, when it was used on a, on a little atom board. Uh, and in the SFX case it was put in but well better be safe than sorry so uh, with all that I guess this, pre this power supply is pretty much uh, ready for big show also the fans don't really bring a lot of uh, air through 
but it's still better than nothing. Okay, I want to finally install the modified power supply into the machine. This kind of connector is not exactly the best because it's possible to insert if like a pin, one pin off the connector. So you gotta watch out for that. You will like connect that. It's just gonna be a matter of slotting this in. Awkward in these things, I find. Oh, good. Because the cable's not flat. It's a bit difficult to let it from letting the cable crawl on the bottom of it. Prevent fitting. Fits better. If the drive cage is removed. Removed. Yeah. Extremely difficult to fit it right. Okay, now it decides to fit properly. I don't know what the hell was wrong. Maybe the IB, ID cable is. Okay, I think this thing is all set up now, so I guess there's no other thing to do other than to flip the power switch. So here it goes. I hear a hard drive spin up. Should get a floppy seek and then a beep code about uh, floppy drive error. Oh, no, keyboard error. Yep, get floppy. And it attempt is booting. Hard drive activity lights not working. Uh, all right, why don't I just take it a step further and show the desk nub actually working? Uh, turns out the hard drive activity light works, but for some reason it isn't booting. 
to DOS. Uh, so I'll have to see for myself with the monitor attached. Maybe it's because of the keyboard being missing. But the desk noob now works. Desk noobs from these from this era seem to resemble the original IBM 5170 for some reason with its full screen. And it even relies on like uh, diagnostic or setup disks to configure them. Oh, it does work. Hi. Okay. Oh, but I don't have a mouse attached. Uh, no. Okay, but we now have a fully working desk noob that does not need a horribly bodged on ATX power supply to play with, as how I've tested it originally. And that's why I was able to get DAS DOS on this uh, prior. Uh, because the original hard drive, which is a 120 megabyte Mac store, uh, was uh, uh, dead already, uh, was dying. And so, a 200, so I've stuffed in a 210 megabyte con job drive that was originally meant to go to my 386SX uh, into this machine. Is that. Uh, is I could not get the, this conjob drive to work on the 386SX. Its uh, IDE interface is a bit dodgy. So, and then up a spare, and so it ended up here in, uh, in the end. So, I'll try to see if I have any. I should have some games copied over already. Of 3D. There's a fault with the onboard video on this Desk Noob 386. Uh, which falls in line with it being an early like uh, single chip uh, video solution and that has to do with the fades uh, yeah there's a lot of noise it's noisy yeah hard drive activity light is uh, definitely working it's not very bright I think I'll have to remove a resistor to make it brighter uh, because I'm not using a 330 ohm resistor have any saved games? Nope. Did you send me save speaker, PC speaker noises, but it's a bit quiet. Right, nice, but I think it looks brighter on the monitor. Yeah, uh, the first time I've encountered a VGA card that's incredibly fuzzy with the palette changes. It reminds me of, uh, of CGA cards, but I've never seen the fuzz of, v of uh, CGA cards in person. What's funny is that er, another VGA clone card that was in uh, my uncle's 386SX doesn't have this problem. And that's one. That one's also an early single chip uh, VGA solution uh, that also has a BIOS where it configures the video registers to have a massive border. And yeah, we now have a working desk noob, or rather, I have a working desk noob. I'll have to go and uh, address the activity LED issue uh, in a bit. Too bad I don't. I think I'll just uh, connect the hard drive activity light straight to the anode of the LED. It's not like it needs to. Sy it can sink a lot of current that way anyway. So I guess that's it for this uh, desk noob. I'll do a video of this uh, in a later time. But in the meantime, I'll uh, take you to that uh, wanker in front of the camera. So I guess that about does that for this video. I now have uh, another uh, 386 uh, to mess around with, although it's uh, riddled with uh, OEM bullshittery. And another uh, fast uh, 486 in my collection after performing the VRM upgraded at Arsys board and uh, yeah this is actually my second fastest uh, 486 uh, because I actually have a faster one uh, already built uh, months ago and it's an AMD X5 machine uh, built using parts uh, that were sent to me by High Treason 610 uh, in exchange for a really shit uh, VIP motherboard that I had that uh, came with the case that the now upgraded 486 now lives in what a piece of shit board that was. Uh, thick, more like thicken. 
and uh, after and after messing around with it, now upgraded the uh, uh, 486 board. Uh, despite uh, the SIS 471 set of chip running at uh, 40 megahertz, it's actually nowhere near as quick as the UMC 888 set of chips that the Optec Hippo Hippo 15 motherboard that that uh, High Trees and Centimi uses. Uh, uh, can uh, go at uh, even though that uh, the UMC chipset is running at 33 megahertz. So yeah, I guess uh, UMC chipsets just have a very fast uh, memory access, uh, but uh, I can't really vouch for it because I don't really have a big sample size with 486s. Uh, so yeah, the only thing left uh, to improve upon uh, my uh, on my uh, DX4 machine by this point is the is uh, that VLB card, uh, the Trident uh, one. Uh, I, need, uh, I need to replace it with something faster because the Trident is incredibly slow and I'm pretty certain ISA only cards, uh, particularly serious ones, can beat it uh, on 16-bit uh, ISA alone. So, but given the cost of these things now, I'm not sure if I can even uh, do that. Maybe it'll remain on that Trident that uh, the board came with. Uh, I don't know, I'll see what I can do, but uh, I gotta save up uh, uh, specifically to replace a few important things uh, uh, that I need to uh, get cracking at uh, replacing uh, with better ones. So, yeah, um, I didn't really uh, mention it properly uh, when I was rambling about hard drives on the uh, for the compact desk move. Uh, and that's because the weird thing about uh, this desk noob is that compact machines from the from this era actually still uses drive type tables just like the older uh, AT compatible systems including IBM's 5170 and uh, the odd thing about it is that or at least with the version of the uh, diagnostic uh, disk that I've used to do, set up the CMOS um, it would actually auto detect the hard drive and select the correct uh, type entry and it just so happens that the conjob drive I had spare is one of those compatible drives. Uh, in fact, the label even says the type number uh, that uh, the diagnostic disk selected. Well, which figures because that drive is a compact spare. Uh, uh, I wonder how that diagnostic disk is going to react when it encounters a drive that it can't find a, a type table entry that matches its geometry though, like say a CF card. But uh, no, no sweat. I've uh, made my own solution from scratch uh, that should uh, help me get around this problem and possibly others. It's actually written for AT systems and not some uh, some vaguely um, I don't know uh, uh, that po that basically that pop popular IDE BIOS that. Uh, it doesn't really have an order attached to it and it's highly fragmented and yet people are still using it. People claim it will work on AT systems but uh, other people claim it claims it doesn't work very well on some earlier AT clones. Meanwhile my solution works properly. Oh well, if you want to find out more about that uh, just look down in the description assuming anyone still reads that, that part of uh, videos these days. Uh, though if anyone's still stalking me on GitHub, they would have uh, known uh, uh, much earlier about it. Um, so yeah, there's been a lot of, a ton of shit to go through. I'm, I'm not sure how much I should uh, go through it, uh, given I want to keep this uh, post-video ramble short. Uh, I'm trying to get off that habit of having uh, extremely long post-video rambles. Uh, uh, but. Uh, well, as you may have noticed in the intro of this video, that uh, I tend to cough uh, uncontrollably. Well, uh, fortunately, I don't really cough so much anymore. Uh, and that's because apparently I have somehow contracted tuberculosis. And I think I've had this since February or so, when I started getting that uh, occasional sensation of tasting something that something that's tastes vaguely like blood for a while. I thought that was just a bit of fishbone that was stuck in my throat for a while. Apparently that's not the case because the fishbone would have dissolved by then uh, when I went to have it checked. But uh, yeah, it's not fun having this. Uh, it doesn't appear to be a contagious one because everyone living around me uh, hasn't uh, caught it as well. 
but it doesn't change the fact that it makes me feel like shit and uh, despite uh, being ill I still have to work otherwise I won't get paid so yeah that that's uh, uh, the wonders of living in Pinoy uh, if I were living in a first world country I would be advised to stay out of work for a month or until I heal up but I guess that but well it's not an option for me so yeah that doesn't really help with uh, that and coupled with uh, coupled with having very limited time at home now and age uh, catching up with me where, where it's not like those old days where just as I arrive from work I can hop into my workstation and start uh, binging particularly back when I was uh, working on PS Nubis DK. I can't really do that kind of thing anymore. I prefer just uh, sitting on the sofa, watch some weeb shit for a while uh, uh, and uh, maybe maybe I'm j I don't know how to describe it properly but I can best I can only best describe it as being lost right now. Uh, uh, yeah, what else to go for go with? Uh, well, my my few plans for future videos has been uh, compromised uh, quite a bit because my dual pinium two board decided to croak just as I finally got uh, pa scuzzy panty raid going. It was going it was going to be my like magnum opus of a obtuse as fuck build like a, a build that no one. No sensible old computer enthusiast would even dare to, especially with what with what I'm planning to do with it. So yeah, shame yeah, shame that QDI Legend 4 board pretty much uh, died. Uh, I was really pissed when that happened, uh, but I've uh, concluded that maybe the board has a fault, particularly with PCI slot 3 where the Panty Raid port slot is, because. The PCI slot on the pan on a panty raid slot should pretty much be a PCI slot, but but uh, well, I got I have, I got a discrete uh, uh, two-channel SCSI raid card uh, to finally get SCSI raid working on it, and suspiciously it would stop working. Uh, it would not work when it's placed on the same on PCI slot three where the panty raid port slot is, and but it will work when I. When I when I uh, put it on any other slot, so and then the arrow cards uh, have to sit on that slot as well, as that's where the panty raid port connector is. Uh, makes me wonder. Maybe PCI slot three is faulty, uh, where where the raid driver will just lock up uh, as NT uh, tries to load it. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, NT four. I, I was ac actually going to if. Use int I intended to use the dual Pentium 2 as a as a server where it was actually would have been used in a real world uh, scenario back if, when that was like current hardware. But sadly, it's dead now. Uh, I was gonna do some really obs obtuse as fuck things with it, like using it as maybe a domain controller, even though I already have one using Samba running on a on a really on an old mid. 2000 server that runs on what on a pair of what's effectively uh, 3 gigahertz press cards because my boss insists it's not obsolete so well I deployed it as a providing VPN service for the workplace uh, even the, the changes that have been done uh, but I'm doing a bunch of experiments with that so yeah the dual Pentium 2 was going to be an NT4 server and it has to be because there's no because there's no as far as I know there's no Windows 2000 or XP drivers for the uh, for the for the RAID option card or even the A131 uh, uh, RAID controller. I'm not sure about the latter though. I haven't really checked. So yeah, it was gonna be an NT4 server. I would have I would have done some really obtuse things with it, like using it as a web server. Uh, with using IIS, it would have uh, made, developed a really shit forum and file hosting uh, service on it, written in in ASP. Uh, well, I guess I'll have to compromise by using a single processor board then. Uh, uh, a shame, really. I'm gonna try to find another dual processor board at some point, but uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe if one board uh, com uh, comes up. Uh, cheap. Uh, the reason why I chose this QDI board was because it was the cheapest uh, dual processor board I could get. Uh, and the same day I was buying that, there was another dual processor board up for sale. It was a, 
I think it was a not so super micro P6 uh, DBU most likely. I don't think it would have been a DGU. Uh, but uh, that one was like double the cost. Didn't have processors or memory and not even an IO shield. So it's a bit difficult to do videos now. Uh, like I said, this me I did say it. I just wanted to make sure it's with my condition right now and limited time in general and age catching up with me or maybe it's just my my uh, my condition really it's, it's quite difficult to do videos now for me uh, I will try but I don't know about live streams I might be able I might try to do some high definition tests but I can't make I can't promise for that I'm just not feeling so well I'm supposed to be staying at home but no I have to go to work yeah. it's a bit shit and uh, I'm also con contemplating going back into the art, art scene despite uh, vowing never to return into such uh, groups uh, such places I've been, I've been wanting to draw again but uh, 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 watching weed crap has uh, been a source of inspiration, especially magic for Magical Girl, which, by the way, hasn't really made much progress. Uh, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm just tired. I can't, I can't stress that enough. Uh, you can probably tell from my, from, uh, from my breathing that I'm just tired. Anyway, I don't think I have anything else to say other than. Uh, well, I have access to PCB fabrication now, uh, and I've made the uh, PCB versions of my mouse converter, uh, which needs a bit more tweaking to perfect it. Uh, knowingly, it's very difficult to find Mini Din 9 cables uh, to use the bus mouse part of it. Uh, uh, maybe I'll finally get around to making my stupid uh, dual FM chip uh, fart lip card. But uh, I don't think it would gain much attention if I put my KYS tech branding on it. Even people seem to be more attracted with things that don't have any branding attached to them. Especially from, from uh, named makers like homebrew hardware that has nothing on it uh, written. I swear, that's just the way how the internet works. If you have a name, no one will give a fuck about you. If you don't have one, they will, they will look up to you. It would treat you like a god. I swear that's the, how the internet works. Even though, even though my wanker friends have uh, begged to differ. Also, to, uh, props to Ed Neil and Pix for some uh, shit that they've sent to me by boat. Uh, even it was like a ton of crap. Uh, especially uh, some, well, old, some, uh, especially that uh, C old CD burner. Uh, Oh, uh, so yes, yeah, I also need to save up for some. I'm gonna hold off of buying a bunch of old old things right now. I'm pretty content at the moment uh, because I need to save up for a much better camera so I can fucking escape uh, dealing with PAL frame rate videos. I also need a new laptop because uh, my Dell E6410 uh, has uh, uh, been getting rather flaky. Uh, uh, with the GPU, uh, likely ball grid array separation, uh, as is a common problem with uh, E6410s with discrete uh, GPUs, apparently. Uh, I also need to get a new phone, even though I hate uh, uh, smart ass phones in general, because programmers don't know how to program worth a damn for that, uh, uh, who write applications for those things anymore. Uh, and oh uh, yeah, that forum thing I mentioned. I was gonna make. Yeah, I was gonna have a second shot uh, with uh, implementing it in ASP. Uh, my first attempt. Uh, uh, I was originally gonna make a forum for my website, but I decided uh, not to implement it because uh, some dickhead there convinced me uh, not to by saying people would just abuse it with legal content. Uh, so. I don't know if I will do it again. Maybe I'll, I would, I would do it. I would make another forum system uh, to replace the, the Discord server that I don't think anyone remembers anymore uh, that I used to run briefly. Uh, but who the fuck uses forums so anymore? So most likely my my third attempt is only going to be accessible to 
to the privileged uh, sorts around me. So yeah, I guess that's uh, all I have to say for now. I'm really tired. Still, like I said, there's just so much shit to uh, catch up with on. So go on forever. It is already quite uh, a long clip by now. So yeah, I'm uh, calling it uh, uh, for today. So I hope uh, you get some, got some enjoyment watching this video. And uh, oh, I almost forgot. Uh, if you're going to use like uh, SFX uh, power supplies uh, uh, for restoring old machines with whose original power supplies have uh, croaked, I'm not sure if uh, newer SFX PSUs are still single rails. The ones that I used were from from 2010 or so. Uh, maybe they've already they've already went uh, multi rail The only way to find out is to crack them open. So so yeah, I guess it's luck of the draw. I don't, I don't really have it. I haven't really taken a look at a newer SFX PSU to know for sure. So, uh, uh, but as you can see, with the desk noob now running using an SFX PSU, it method does work. And given the small size, would should fit in just about any form factor, unless you're dealing with some really, really obscure and really, really small power supply. This is for. Uh, some OEM systems. So yeah, I guess that's it for this video. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, Lengai64 is signing out, and uh, I hope you have a better uh, day than I than I will ever get. Especially when you're not sick. <laughs>